Hello, my name is Tom and I work at Fort Nelson, home of the National Collection of Artillery. And today I want to talk about my favourite type of artillery, the first artillery pieces ever made, the catapult. Catapults were invented way before anti-aircraft guns and way before even cannons were invented. So, what is a catapult? Well, a catapult is a device used to launch objects a great distance without the use of gunpowder or explosives. Sounds simple enough, but it involves an awful lot of science to make it work. To shoot something like a rock, you need energy, a lot of energy. Imagine you're holding a big rock in your hands. Feel the weight of it. Now, think about how far you could throw it. Not very far, I'd imagine, because we can't generate enough energy in our own bodies. So, around the world, people started building machines to do the hard work for them. And those machines are called catapults. The first catapults that we know a lot about came from ancient Greece. Now, at first, the Greeks built catapults that were essentially giant bows and arrows. Except, with a rock, so it's bows and rocks, I guess. All they did was build a really big bow and generate energy by pulling back on the bowstring and then releasing it. The energy stored in the string would throw the rock forward. Because it works by creating tension in the string, a fancy word that means making it tighter, we call this tension power. But, if you've read anything about the ancient Greeks, you know they were really big on inventing new things and ideas. And it wasn't long before they came up with a way of generating even more power. They discovered that you can generate energy not just by pulling a rope, but by twisting it. Although they preferred to use oxen sinew or hair rather than rope. In case you didn't know, sinew are ligaments or tendons. Ah. When you twist sinew or hair, it stores energy inside it, like a battery. And when you untwist it, all the energy is released. So what the Greeks did was build something which you may know as the ballista. They made two catapult arms out of wood, each inside their own bit of twisted sinew or hair. They then attached a bowstring between the two arms, which would pull the arms backwards. When you let go, the catapult arms would shoot forward as the twisted bit of hair or sinew untwisted, violently, transferring the energy into the projectile and shooting it forward. The sciencey word for twisting something is torsion. So guess what we call this type of power? Yes, you've got it, it's torsion. Now a ballista looked like this. This photograph shows a modern version of a ballista from the side, and if you look up towards the wheel at the front, you can just see one of the catapult arms sticking out towards you. Now, improvements in catapult design continued. The Romans copied the Greeks' idea and developed it to build another type of catapult called the onager. And on the other side of the world, the Chinese developed another method of launching rocks using a totally different design. Instead of using the principle of tension or of torsion, the Chinese method was to use people. What the Chinese did was to create a catapult by balancing a big beam of wood across the top of a wooden frame. At one end of the beam was a sling, and inside the sling was the projectile, a fancy word for the object they were shooting towards the enemy, basically a giant rock. They would then get a load of people to pull on the, these ropes on the front, to pull the front of the beam down. This would launch the back of the beam up into the air, throwing the sling and the projectile inside it forward towards the enemy. Now, our history of the catapult doesn't end here, because this Chinese design was taken back towards the west by merchants in the 6th century, where the Byzantines and their Mediterranean neighbours improved it to make the most powerful and accurate catapult ever designed, the trebuchet. Now this is a modern version, modelled by our modern medieval siege machine operator. Rather than having to get a load of people to pull down on the front of the beam, they put a weight in the big box on the front, and that is called a counterweight. 
if you look really closely at the photograph, you can just see the rope attached to the back of the beam. And at the end of the rope is a sling with a heavy ball lying on the ground. When our modern medieval siege operator pulls on the rope, the counterweight drops downwards, the beam swings round and launches the sling up into the air and the projectile, in this case a heavy ball, is flung towards the enemy. Why waste effort when gravity will do the work for you? Catapults remained an important artillery piece until gun barrels and gunpowder became available. As it turned out, the gunpowder generated a lot of energy and can also be used for blowing things up. But the principle of the catapult still worked and it was even used as late as the First World War when they used catapult to project grenades over short distances into enemy trenches. So now that you know a little bit about catapults, it's time for, drum roll everybody, the Royal Armory's Catapult Challenge. We want you to design and build your very own catapult, powered by tension, torsion, or even like the ancient Chinese mangonel, by manpower. The choice is yours. We're looking for the design that can shoot a projectile the furthest distance, and we'd like you all to join in and take up the challenge. Even I've made one. Check this out. It's actually just a tension-powered catapult because it works by tensing this elastic band here. Now there's one thing that I want to mention about this design and that is this pencil at the front here called the stop. What that does is it stops the catapult arm from going too far forward and shooting the projectile straight into the table rather than up into the air, which is where I want it to go. I can change the position of the stop by pushing it through one of these other sets of holes to change the angle of the shot and make it shoot higher. But it might not shoot as far if I do that, but you can experiment and see what works best for you. All you need to make this design is a small box, some pencils, elastic bands and either a bottle cap or you could use a spoon instead. You may even have some better ideas what to put on the end of the arm. As for your projectile, use something light, like a bit of scrumpled up paper or tin foil, or even a marshmallow. But why waste a marshmallow when you could eat it? Be careful when you're shooting them. However light your projectile is, never shoot it towards anything that could break, and definitely don't shoot them at people. Because if you hit someone in the eye, that's gonna really hurt them. If you want to know how I made my catapult, go online to the Royal Armory's Home Learning Hub and you'll find the instructions there. And remember, before you start making or shooting your catapult, always ask a grown up first. We would love to see your designs. So once you've perfected your catapults, send us a picture or even a film to either our Facebook or Twitter accounts. And remember to tell us how far you were able to get your projectile. Good luck and may the best catapult win. That's all for us at Fort Nelson. Bye for now. Thank you.